topical finasteride versus topical dutastride, which is right for your hair goals. And if you are going to select one, what's the right concentration and application frequency? This is a question that we get all the time inside of our membership website. We see it all the time online. And the truth is, nobody has a good answer for you. And the reason why nobody has a good answer for you is because no clinical studies exist yet that compare topical finasteride across any dosing range to topical dutastride across any dosing range. So everybody's left speculating. One of the favorite things for people to do is to speculate based on the oral data on these drugs, because we do have comparative clinical studies on oral finasteride versus dutasteride. And routinely across many studies, dutasteride outperforms finasteride often by 30 to 40% relative more hair count improvements. But we can't take those oral studies and just apply them or extrapolate them to topicals because the Dalton ratios of these drugs are different. The exponentiating terminal half-lives of dutasteride are likely different from finasteride. And even the absorption rates of dutasteride seem to follow a curve that is more diminishing curves, whereas finasteride is linear. So when you factor in all these complicated moving parts and then a lot of internet speculation, what do you end up with? You end up with a lot of conflicting opinions and no clarity on what to do, how to select these things, and which drug might be right for you and at which concentrations. This video is not going to answer all these questions. All I'm going to do is explain to you the signals that we are seeing amongst members and how you might interpret these signals to make decisions for yourself. So I'll go across a range of dosing options for topical finasteride, topical dutasteride, and all I am looking for are two endpoints, efficacy, so hair regrowth, and then safety, or in this case, the best approximate, which would be localization. And we can approximate localization by looking at the changes to blood DHT when you apply these things. So we're gonna move really quickly and we'll have a later video at some point diving into all of the pharmacokinetic data and the clinical data that does exist that is very imperfect measuring these things. All right, topical finasteride versus topical dutasteride at ultra low dilutions. Here is what we know so far. At doses of topical finasteride of 0.005% times two milliliters daily. So that is 0.1 milligrams daily of topical finasteride exposure. On average, we see hair growth at this level. In fact, there's a clinical study that shows that over a 16 month period, individuals using that formulation of finasteride saw improvements to hair parameters. And most importantly, they saw them without seeing changes to their blood levels of DHT. Again, that's our best approximate to measure localization of that drug. So very favorable overall. Do the results translate to real life? No. They don't always translate to real life. They do in about 50% of cases because about 50% of members who track their DHT levels before starting that formulation and after formulation, those guys, they saw no changes to their serum DHT levels. Okay, that reflects what was seen in the clinical study and they saw regrowth. Again, really encouraging. But the other 50%, they saw regrowth. Again, really encouraging. But what they didn't see was no change to their serum DHT. Some people saw a 20, 30, 50, even 70% decline to their serum DHT levels at that ultra low dose of topical finasteride. So what does this tell us? It tells us that yes, that dosing parameter works, it's effective, but is it localized? I would say it localizes about half the time, not 100% of the time. So just keep that in mind. And if you really wanna get granular with the data, track. Now what about low dose topical dutastride? Well, when I say low dose, I'm talking about 0.025% times two milliliters, one to three times per week. So a very low exposure to topical dutasteride overall. What we see here is that we get better drug localization. Guys using that formulation of dutasteride really don't report any changes to their serum DHT of significance. So within plus or minus 10%. That's really encouraging, but they don't report the same hair regrowth that most people report with 0.005% finasteride. So what we gain in localization with low dose topical dutasteride, we lose with efficacy. Most guys at that dosing parameter on the low dose dutasteride, they just report hair loss stabilization. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. We also have a group of guys who are testing 
up to four to six milligrams per week of topical dutasteride exposure. So that can be a higher concentration and application frequency. That might look like 0.1% times four to six milliliters per week. At that dosing range, we still see good localization of topical dutasteride, but we start to see regrowth in these individuals. And we don't yet have enough of a signal to say with any degree of certainty if that regrowth is better than what you get with low dose topical finasteride, but it is interesting and it is encouraging. So you can push the envelope in terms of dutasteride exposure topically, and it seems like there's more wiggle room with that drug than with topical finasteride in terms of preserving blood levels of DHT. Again, that's the best approximate we have for whether these topicals actually stay mostly localized. So that's encouraging overall. Now, what happens when we go from low dose topical finasteride to higher strength topical finasteride? So 0.1 to 0.3%, one to two milliliters per day. At this dosing range, we almost always see serum DHT levels drop by about as much as if you were to use the oral formulation of finasteride, which begs the question, why even bother? Why not just use the oral medication? There is one study that demonstrated that despite serum DHT levels dropping by almost as much as oral finasteride at these higher concentrations of topical finasteride. Despite that happening, there was a study that showed that circulating levels of finasteride were still orders of magnitude lower. And it's the circulating levels of finasteride that's not bound to any NADPH, that's not going to inhibit 5-alpha reductase, that's gonna get transported to other organ sites. So think of serum DHT as the canary in the coal mine. The real metric that matters is the amount of finasteride that goes untouched in the blood, travels, gets deposited in other organ sites, and then has an effect there. So there could be some protection, even at those higher strength formulations of finasteride, there could be some protection of DHT reductions in the prostate, in the liver, in the testes, in the eyes, and in other places in the body where side effects might crop up. So still get even better results though, versus the topical 0.005% times two milliliters of finasteride. So what we see here is we see better regrowth than the low dose, oral fina uh, low dose topical finasteride, but a lot more systemic exposure, maybe a little bit more protection against side effects versus the oral formulations, but is it worth it? I don't know. Now with the higher strength topical dutasteride, we see 0.1% to 0.3%, one to two milliliters daily. We see a little bit better regrowth there too than the lower dose topical dutasterides. In fact, it's, it's not even a little, it's, it's often substantial. This is where like real big hair gains start to kick in. And what's interesting here is that of the guys using that formulation, what we see is that these guys, they tend to still have some serum DHT reductions, but they don't seem to be as dramatic for whatever reason as the high strength topical finasteride users. So it seems like there still might be some localization capacity with the dutasteride that's unique to that drug, even at higher concentrations than with the topical finasteride. Now, how does the regrowth compare across these two subgroups? I, I don't know. We don't have enough data. We don't have enough guys who have tried either of these things for a long enough period. And I don't want to extrapolate because we're already using a lot of anecdotal signals here, which could open us up to you know, making interpretations that need to be revisited when actual clinical studies come out to measure these things. But I wanted to give you this matrix to look at. And on this matrix, I also want you to consider your goals. Are your goals localization and efficacy? What degree of comfort do you have in terms of localization and efficacy? Do you want bigger hair gains? Do you want less hair gains? Do you want absolute maximizing of safety? Are you okay with a little bit of systemic drug leakage and even some serum DHT declines if it means bigger hair gains? You gotta ask yourselves these questions. But in the meantime, you have the relationships now displayed. Look at this matrix make your decisions on which formulation might be best for you. And if you had to just pick any of them, I would say just try one milligram of oral finasteride if you haven't experienced any side effects. And if you do, you can titrate the dose, change the formulation. And if you're not experiencing any side effects after six to 12 months, if you want even bigger hair gains, go to oral dutasteride. That's the easiest roadmap. And of course, if you need support in any direction, we have our instant support tools, we have our forums, we have our private messaging systems, anything that you need, we're here for you. We're wishing you the best with everything. And I hope that this video helps take your hair to another level.